We continue. It is the Zach Gelb Show on the Infinity Sports Network, and it's a big day for us as we welcome an old friend, and affiliate, KTIK The Ticket, back carrying the Zach Gelb Show weekdays from 1 to 3 p.m. Mountain Time and leading into my guys, Prater and the ball game. Absolutely love those guys and happy that we could lead you in in Boise to that great radio show. Talking about great things, the Boise State football program is off to a heck of a start. Ashton Genty, you've seen the stats all over the place throughout the weekend and leading into today. 267 rushing yards, six touchdowns, Boise State is 1-0, and and now they have a big Week 2 matchup against Oregon. So let's welcome in the head football coach at Boise State, and that, of course, is Spencer Danielson, kind enough to join us right now. Coach, congrats on a Week 1 victory. Thanks so much for joining us. I know you guys are going through uh, some wildfires right now, so hope everything's okay back at home. Zach, appreciate it. No, proud of our guys. I mean, our team, they don't run from work. And obviously, Saturday afternoon down in Statesboro wasn't perfect, but when you can find a way to respond and come out with you know, a hostile environment with a win – that's a testament to our players and our coaches did a great job to get out of there. Obviously, Ashton Genty, a guy that is a 10 out of 10 human being, um, everyone's he put on full display that he's the best football player in the country. But I'm proud of how our guys fought and battled and found a way to go 1-0, and and now we got to work our tails off to have the opportunity to do it again. But it's been good. We had a good day of practice today. To your point, Zach, we got some wildfires, so we started outside and then and worked into the indoor to, uh, to get out of the uh, DL smoke a little bit. But excited, excited where we're heading. When you say best football player in the country, it's easy to see the stats, right? He had that 77-yard rushing touchdown, 267 rushing yards, and six touchdowns. But there will be people that will go, how can a player from Boise State be the best player in the country and maybe go on to win the Heisman? What would your response be to that? Well, first off, using Ashton as an example, I mean, he had he had every every opportunity to to leave to go somewhere else. And I'm not going to name schools, but from an illegal recruitment standpoint, he could have gone anywhere and they would have been on full display wherever he went. But he's a guy that's committed to us. He's a, he's he's loyal. He wants to be a part of a team and he's and he's a unanimous captain as a 20, 20 year old. Never has happened in my time here where an underclassman's unanimous captain. That's a testament to who he is as a person, how he leads in his actions and how he works. Because if anybody has a question about what to do, I just say, watch Ashton Genty every day and you'll find yourself close to where you need to be. And that's who he is. No, There's no shocker that Sire Gaines has come on the scene so strong as a true freshman running back because since he come in in January, he's wired similar to Ashton, and all he's had to do is watch Ashton and follow him and go through it. But Ashton Genty deserves all the credit because he puts the work in. It's not a guy that has a you know flash player there and, hey, we got to think we got to get him to practice. This young man is even better – off the field as he is on it. And like I said, he's the best football player in the country, but who he is as a person, how he leads, how he impacts our culture every day. I mean, I'll scream it from the rooftops. He's a 10 out of 10 in every aspect. And some people that cover this sport from afar will just be hearing his name for the first time. Last year, we know what he was able to do. Over 1,200 rushing yards, had nearly 600 receiving yards. You talk about, right, this era of college football where when you're at a smaller school, we know Boise State, has done a heck of a job throughout the years. People just anticipate a player like that off a successful season is going to be elsewhere. How did you guys get him to stay? And what made him so special where he said, okay, I still want to be a part of what you guys are continuing to show on the field? Yeah, well, I mean, Ashton has been raised the right way and he's been wired the right way since he came here as a 17-year-old. I mean, he's, he comes from a great family. Mom and dad are awesome. Military background. Yes, sir. No, sir. Um, you know, we were recruiting him during COVID. So a lot of people couldn't go out and see him through his junior year. And he was playing a bunch of different positions. And so he, he, he was able to come out here on a day in June, committed to us. And he goes on to, I think, lead Texas in touchdowns as a senior. But he's committed to us. He stayed loyal. A bunch of other schools came in to recruit him to flip to come to their school. He stayed loyal to Boise State. No different fast forward to December. He's the offensive player of the year in our conference. Undoubted the, the best weapon on the West Coast. And we have a conversation, you know, with with him, his dad, and he wanted to be here. It was not, all right, let's go to the bargaining table and see what can you do for me. This young man is built different. He wants to help the team. And it's a new era to where, I mean, these these kids are dealing with coaches calling them, telling them to leave to make all this money. And Ash is different. He, he wanted to be a part of a team. He wanted to be a part of a brotherhood. And he wanted to be developed to play in the NFL. And he stayed true to his desires and, and how God made him. And he stayed. And that now is the one time we had that conversation. And the first time we have a workout in January when it's snowing on the blue, Ashton Genty is the first one in the building. I mean, that's just who he is. And he's and he's done nothing but outwork people 
every single day this offseason. So what he did Saturday afternoon, I'm not shocked about. Now, trust me, running down the sideline after two of the 77-yard runs fired me up every time I almost pulled a hand <laughs> and run down the sideline. But, I mean, that's he deserves the credit because he puts the work in. I think in this day and age, sometimes people want – want want the attention they want some of the tweets but like are you really are you really willing to do what it takes every day ash and Genty is willing to do what it takes i think you may i don't know if you have coach spencer danielson but do you have a hold me back coach because if ashton continues to do this man <laughs> uh, you, those hamstrings are gonna be getting some work this year for you no question i woke up sunday and i was joking with my wife i was like why is my right shoulder so sore because all the chest pumps and the fist pumps that i go so violent so i gotta find a way to stretch out a little bit more Obviously, all the attention Coach Spencer Danielson's going to go to Ashton Genty. You brought up as well, say, your gains, your, your freshman running back, who on um, what 12 carries had over 100 yards as well. I know he has a great role model in Ashton, like you described, but what really stood out to you with his performance this past weekend? Yeah, I mean, similar to Ash, could have gone a bunch of different places, recruiting him out of high school, had a bunch of opportunities, came here because he wanted to be developed, wanted to be a part of something different. Um, Cause we do do things differently than maybe what the country does. We're all about development here It's developing from mentally, physically, spiritually. Like that's what we focus on. And he want to be a part of that. And since he's come here in January, once again, Ashton being his role model, he has just continually put his head down and work. I mean, this young man's on a mission. I related as a coach, as a coach, it is my job to take these players places. They can't go without me. If they could go places with, um, if I'm here or not, like I'm wasting their time. But you have those select few guys like Ashton, uh, you know, Ahmed Hassain, Sire Gaines, like they're on such a mission. It's my job to make sure that all I do is help steer them in the right direction because they're so motivated to be elite in all facets. And that's Sire Gaines. I mean, he what he did on Saturday, he did the same thing in spring ball as an early enrollee true freshman that was 17 years old. And then he did the same thing in fall camp. Nobody knows his name. Now the country does, and he's all deserving of it because, once again, he's only put the work in in every single day. What mission is your quarterback Maddox Madsen on? Just curious. He is one of the best competitors I've ever been around and a guy that is never gets too high, never gets too low. And as a defensive coach going against a quarterback that you can't rattle, that you can't get in his head, that's a terrifying deal for a defense because even if you hit him, even if he throws an interception, he's still going to be on the attack. That's Maddox Matson. He's got a master of the offense. Um, he understands where to get the ball to. He's calm. He's collected. He's on the attack. He's a guy that if you play him in chess, checkers, or ping pong, he's going to find a way to strangle you to win. Um, and that's the type of guy that's leading our offense. And he's a guy that I go to war with any day of the week. And obviously on Saturday, he wasn't perfect, but you show the type of quarterback and leader he is. And he's a redshirt sophomore. He's only going to continue to get better. Um, and he played really well on Saturday. And that's a testament to his prep and who he is as a competitor. And he goes through some adversity. There's no doubt about it, because from afar, when you guys got Malachi Nelson, I thought, OK, that's going to be your starting quarterback. So what what differently did Maddox show you throughout that whole competition to make him the right guy to start for you guys uh, week one last week? Yeah, Zach, I mean, we have two good quarterbacks and I made sure I, I'm, I'm open about this, like Maddox and Malachi are two really good quarterbacks. When, when we got Malachi and we went through the recruitment process of Malachi, you know, I had a conversation with Maddox and I had a conversation with his dad. And, and all they want is a coach. Is this going to be a competition? I said, absolutely. As long as I'm the head coach here, every single position on OD and special teams will always be earned. Nothing will be given off of rankings. Nothing will be given about what you've done at other places. It's all about what you earn at Boise State. And he said, coach, that's all I wanted to hear. And he wasn't able to practice a lot through spring ball because he was still dealing with a knee injury from season but he continually works. I mean, Maddox is a worker and he did the same thing in the off season as he did in fall camp and continue just to make sure when he's in our, our offense was executing at a very high level. And the, he was the best decision for us to go win game one and win our games was playing Maddox Matson. And then my, my conversation with Malachi, your job is to keep to continue to prep in such a way. Cause you're one play away from being the starting quarterback at Boise sure. state. So you got to get your mind right and be able to prep. But um, there was a lot of different media thoughts and emotions about me making the call to start Maddox. Um, it was 100% the right decision. He deserves it. He earned it. Um, and I think that was on full display Saturday. And he's only going to get better. Spencer Danielson, the coach of Boise State, here with us. They're 1 0. Ashton Genty, the story from that one with 267 rushing yards and six touchdowns. Boise State goes up against Oregon this Saturday night. Uh, before we get to the Ducks, uh, I, it's weird talking to a college coach and saying, what's the offseason like for you? Because there's really no offseason now. 
in this era of the transfer portal, name, image, and likeness. But you've been with Boise for a long time. You took over as the interim head coach last year. You end up winning the conference, and then you got the full-time gig. So it's different when you go from the assistant to the, even the interim to the head coach. Now you really control everything in this program with your fingertips all over it. So what was uh, the offseason uh, like for you this past year? Yeah, it was a whirlwind in, in, in a lot of ways. I mean, I got a great wife who supports me in all facets. And, um, you know, I'd reminisce without saying I got, I got to give God all the glory. I believe that the only reason I'm the head coach at Boise State is because God put me in that seat to develop people. And, um, you know, I give Jesus all the praise. But I, it's it's something for me that you go from getting the job. We play a bowl game in, in about 10 days. We go play the bowl game. Then we have signing day. And then the portal's wide open, so you're dealing with conversations and more just educating our parents and players on what's going on because, you know, about 10 to 15 of our guys were getting illegally recruited to leave Boise State. So you work through that. You go Then you go into finishing recruiting in January, spring ball. And I've got great mentors in my life that I continually pick their brain of. And, and I believe in being a lifelong learner. That's how I was raised. I want to be the guy that's 80 years old and wherever I go, I bring a notebook that I'm taking notes of whoever's talking, right? Like, I just think there's such a, there's so much merit in being a lifelong learner. You could take something from some, from everybody. And I got great mentors that I pick their brain on all facets from um, practice schedules to culture to, um, you know, understanding who you are. Cause I think there's also an understanding as a young head coach of how God made me. This is me. I'm high energy, intense all sure. the time. Glass half full. That's me. Some coaches aren't that way. And if I wanted to be like that, I wouldn't be authentic and our players would see right through it. So stand true to who I am, how God made me, but then having a lot of mentors that I can pick their brain because going into this fall camp, this was my first fall camp as a head coach and looking at it to think, am I missing something? Is this too many reps, too little reps? You know, all the little intricacies of a of the program at Boise State, especially in, in, in an area where Bronco Nation is strong and, you know, we're the NFL team in Idaho and I got make no bones about saying it like it's a it's a huge part of this city, this, this state. And and we sit in a facility that is built on the backs of two decades worth of winning seasons. Um, and I take that very seriously. You know, being the head coach here, um, the standard is through the roof. The expectations are always through the roof. And you love that. And if you don't like it, I tell our coaches, don't come to Boise State because that's what it's going to be here every year. And so I'm a product of having a lot of good people around me, picking their brain on how to do things the right way. Um, and I'm also a father of two little girls, a three-year-old and a two-year-old, and we've got one on the way. So wow. my wife is a rock star. So I, I go from football, high energy, intense, to go home to singing Moana and playing dress up with our three-year-old and two-year-old. <laughs> so it's a good mix. That's unbelievable. Spencer Danielson here with us for a few more moments. You know, I went to Temple, so I was very close with Matt Rule. Uh, the last few years, I've become very close with Dan Lanning as well. Uh, you kind of remind me of a mixture of both those coaches, you know, knowing them when they're young and just their energy, uh, really just contagious and infectious, uh, what, what you bring day in and day out. I know you go up against Dan Lanning this week, so how about a little bit about his program and, and what you've observed so far? Yeah, I mean, I think the world of Dan Lanning and, and his entire staff that he's assembled. I mean, you talk about a guy that not only is one of the you know best football minds of our generation, but he's also an elite recruiter. Um, I mean, you could tell that from what they lost to the NFL to how they reloaded in the transfer portal and fit all their needs. And honestly, on paper, got even better. I mean, that's a testament to him, his staff, the recruiting they did. Um, and they're also on the cutting edge from a schematic standpoint. They're they're not one of those teams that have a lot of um, skill positions or a lot of talent and don't know how to use it. I mean, this is a very sound, well-coached football team. And I think it's very uncommon. And it's a testament to Dan Lanning and his staff where you can take a lot of transfers and maybe a lot of play, people that have played a lot of different ball other places and bring them in and put them on a mission together. I mean, it's very impressive to me. And I, I think the world of what they do. Yeah, and Dylan Gabriel is one of those players. I know he's transferred a, a few spots, but you know, you you talked about earlier how you guys didn't play your best football week one, and that's week one football, especially in college. It, it gets sloppy, but as long as you win, that's the only thing that matters. I can't wait to see how this game plays out on Saturday night because they didn't play their best game in week one. You guys didn't play your your, your best game in week one, and there's definitely going to be some improvements from week one to week two. No, there's no question. And and I think you, everyone's kind of figuring out their roster going into week one, how guys play. And then it's on film, you know, great evaluation for us as coaches to know, hey, this is exactly what a player is going to do when the emotion and stress is high. And so you got to make adjustments. Um, and just like I know Coach Lanning and their entire staff is going to do as well. And, and we know they're going to be ready for us and we're going to be ready for them. 
And, uh, you know, we're fired up for the opportunity just to speak to Dylan Gabriel, though. I mean, he you talk about him. Mean, we played him when he was at UCF in 21. And I had a front row seat as a defensive coordinator just to see how he can run an offense, how he can make plays with his feet. I mean, I think the absolute world of Dylan Gabriel and I know who he is as a person is uh, through the roof as well. So we're going to have our hands full and we got to have a great week of practice. No, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but uh, last thing I'll ask you, because I've heard you mention it now a few times in the conversation, Spencer Danielson, about the illegal recruitment that happens with, with some of your guys. You know, it's disrespectful to Boise to say they're a little guy program because we've seen you guys throughout the years just pull off big win after big win and and have so much success. But you know what the the role is in the landscape of the sport is. Is there anything you could do to to kind of – uh, change some of the illegal recruiting uh, that does go on? like, Or is this just going to be something that continues to happen throughout the years, unfortunately? Yeah, Zach, good question. I mean, um, you know, it's something that is happening consistently. And for me, I believe in control what you can control. Um, you know, the NCAA is not calling me to figure out how to navigate change, and that's okay. But for me, it's all about recruiting the right players that want to be a, a part of something bigger than themselves, so you got to find the right guys to be a part of our football program. I tell all recruits, high school or transfers, I protect our locker room at all costs because you bring in a couple guys that aren't, aren't about the team and are all about me, 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 that will break your culture. And then at the moment's notice, they will leave for a better opportunity on paper. And that's just not what our team's about. And that's a testament to Ashton, Ahmed, Kay, but some of these guys that – are very talented and will have opportunities to go other places because they want to be developed. They want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. That's football. So you got to find the right guys. And then you have to have an environment where they love to be and they know they are growing and being developed better than anywhere in the country. And that's my message to our players is, yes, you could go places to make more money or blah, 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 but there's no place in the country you're going to be loved, cared for, and developed like Boise State. And I believe that. And we got a long way to go. We got a long way to keep growing, me included. But I believe in that model because that's Boise State. And I also know when our guys graduate from here, they're going to be ready to be better husbands, better fathers, better people in this world in a day and age that desperately needs men to stand up for they believe in and be world changers. Coach, I could took ball with you all day and let you get back to work. Really appreciate you doing this. And good luck this upcoming weekend on Saturday against Oregon. Thanks so much. Thanks, Zach. God bless you guys. Appreciate it.